بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله The question was asked by one of our brothers and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us in him and forgive us in him and guide us in him Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen uh, Are there any Dar al-Hadiths around uh, and would you recommend any or any universities that offer Islamic studies that do not require an annual acceptance list like the ones in Saudi Arabia and how about Mauritania what are your thoughts about studying there Jazakallah khairan so what I would say in this regard, <clears throat> as we know, it's very important as the Prophet said, Man fiddin. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them fiqh fiddin. He gives them understanding of the religion. So we want to strive our utmost to gain that understanding of the religion and to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you is that He gives you this fiqh fiddin. And this is what we understand from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Likewise, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, Talib al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslim wa musliman. That seeking knowledge is a, an obligation upon every male and female muslim. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam also said that Man salaka tariqan yal talmasuhu bi ilmin sahala lahu lahu tariqan al jannah that whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah, Allah will make easy for him the path to Jannah. So we see that the one who is blessed to do Talib al-Ilm, uh, this is a sign that, they, that Allah has love for them. Secondly, it shows that they're on the path to Jannah. If they have ikhlas, they have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they're striving to learn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion in order to practice it and propagate it and better themselves. And those are just some of the uh, some benefits from amongst the many benefits of seeking knowledge. As far as specifically pertaining to your question, then we have to look at a few things. There's a few aspects or a few important points regarding the question. Uh, the first thing about Dara Hadith. The Dara Hadith that I, am, uh, that I know and have visited or have lived in for a period of time, those were Marakis al-Ilm, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them, uh, some of them are still around in Yemen. And I would not advise going to Yemen, nor do I think it's really possible to enter Yemen, possibly in the south, but I wouldn't advise it at all. Because, as we know, they are in conflict, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve the country and unite the people's heart based on the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and bless them with peace and stability, ameen ya rabbil alameen, and an increase in their rizq, in their economic well-being, ameen. So I wouldn't advise that. There are dar hadith also, there is here in Mecca and Medina. And I think the requirements to get into those, uh, the dar hadith, as well as Mahar al-Haram, which I studied a year in Mahar al-Haram in Medina as well, that those, um, uh, those either you have to have uh, residency here in Saudi Arabia or you possibly, they offer outside scholarships. I don't know. I'm not really aware. But I think mostly, most of the people that I know who studied in Dar al-Hadith and, uh, and, and, and Mahar al-Haram, that they were people who were residents, they were workers, and then they studied uh, in the evening. And some were students of knowledge, uh, and they, they were able to just f make full-time study there. So those are just some of the situations. What we want to be concerned about is that when you do study, wherever you go, and I can only speak more so about the Arab countries, uh, as far as institutions, although there are uh, throughout Africa, 
uh, in, in West Africa, I believe, and in other places, really all over Africa, that were funded in the past by Saudi Arabia. But due to various reasons, probably many of those institutes have either closed down or they don't have the funding any longer. And so, also in Indonesia as well. So I think Indonesia has some opportunities as well. And I know some sheikhs there, but I don't have contacts with them anymore. But there are, I, I know there are opportunities in, in many of the Muslim lands. Uh, as far as some of the Arab countries going to Morocco, Mauritania, um, and of course Egypt. Egypt, I think, would probably be the easiest and the uh, where you would have more options as far as learning the Arabic language. There are... It would be improper to say, or incorrect, incorrect to say that there are no Salafis in the Azhar. Okay. However, with that being said, I believe still that the main Aqidah that is taught there in Azhar and places like that, although you know it's an institution where you could get a scholarship and study and learn the Arabic language and learn fiqh and learn other things, the other sciences, but because of their program uh, is highly uh, Ashidi in nature. As, a, as its foundation, I couldn't recommend going there uh, because many of the people, even if you have a, a generally a general uh, Aqidah, the uh, Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, it's possible that you can be persuaded or that you can be influenced by studying in non Salafi institutions, or should I better, it would be more correct to say uh, institutions that are either run by Ahl Bidah. Or highly, uh, that that the curriculum itself is uh, laced with a lot of the methodology of ahl kalam and philosophy and so on and so forth. So, with that being said, in Egypt there are opportunities and institutes to study the Arabic language, and and uh, and of course there's mashayikh there and other opportunities, but I'm not fully familiar because I'm, I've never lived in Egypt. I've only visited Egypt, but speaking to various brothers who've come and gone from Egypt, that those are some of the opportunities. Likewise, going to Morocco, uh, perhaps uh, you could learn the Arabic language, but again, you just need to be careful about the institutes in which you learn because probably when learning the language, they will probably emphasize either uh, emphasizing um, political uh, issues and, and so forth and learning the Arabic language with those po with the politics or they will uh, perhaps have some other orientation so I would just be weary as well uh, in those situations uh, to be cognizant I'm not saying that you you shouldn't absolutely if you don't if you have this opportunity a blessed opportunity to go and study then you need to uh, be in the law take that opportunity uh, as far as Mauritania Mauritania is well known for their scholarship for their memorization especially and scholars that come out of there although they're not known generally uh, in 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 of having the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah, there are those that do, and there are some known Salafi Mashaykh uh, from the past and so forth, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, just in general, you, you need to be cautious because of uh, the immense amount of uh, the Sufi Aqidah that is there and that will be taught. So even if you begin by learning Arabic, and even if they are very, very on a high level uh, in, in, in many of those sciences and in memorization, but we fear that perhaps you can be influenced uh, by the, uh, the Aqidah uh, in those places. So I don't know of any institutes that teach or any sheikhs there. Uh, I don't know of any. That does not mean that there isn't. There aren't any. I'm just saying I have no knowledge of this. So uh, I can't say uh, other than that, except for to be careful uh, in, in, in a general sense. So those are just some of the things that I, I would advise in general 
to think carefully about wherever you go. And now there's many online programs, Wallahi Alhamdi, where you can study Arabic and you can study uh, the religion. Of course, it's not like making a rihla fi talab al ilm, you know, to go and travel and seek knowledge at the feet of the scholars, which is the best. But uh, if you are unable to do so, then Wallahi Alham now it uh, knowledge has come to your door and is in the houses of the people. And even oftentimes, you can study some knowledge for free. So this is a great na'ma from Allah And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.